Are we wait? Are we doing jump or sorry? Fuck. Uh, are we doing jump or Gintama first? <laughs> Gintama first, just because it might end okay. up uh, us <laughs> taking a little bit longer just to cut talk that about. out. Just cut that part out. No, it's going in in the beginning now, and then the theme song will play <laughs> to let everyone know. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the series in which we decide to look through all of the Shonen Jump animes uh, individually, starting with Gintama. And speaking on that, we'll be going there soon because I forgot to introduce Zenrot. Hello, <laughs> Zen. Welcome. Hello. Welcome back. You're the uh, person I do this with. I was so close to professional opening, and I fucked it up at the at the, the at the last second there <laughs> with the names. I always forget something. Uh, anyway, as I was saying beforehand, we usually were we were doing ten episodes of uh, Gintama last week. We were not able to actually finish it because both me and Zen ended up being very busy with work, and we weren't able to do it this week. Zen was able to see five of them. So we will be talking about five episodes of Gintama, which are episodes 21 through 25 the of Gintama Season 1. Going forward, I think for Gintama at least, in order to actually be able to have full-on dedication to what we are, I think we're going to switch to five episodes for it, just because it's going to be much easier for us to talk about and actually give time and attention to, and also because the busy schedule and stuff like that. So both me and Zen agreed <laughs> while before recording that that's going to be the way to go. Cause that just makes the most sense. So yeah, five, it's going to be five episodes for Gintama going forward for the foreseeable future. The good thing is, is that now if you were wondering, cause every episode we've been saying like, Hey, maybe when we hit the end of season one, we'll switch to something else. The current plan is actually, we will stick with Gintama for the entirety of whenever we feel at least in season two. Well, it's it's been renewed to at least another 50 episodes, which is season two. <laughs> <laughs> the green light. Yes, because it will be, yeah, the green light. So that means we will continually every week do the five episodes of Gintama, but also on a completely separate day, just to keep it going, to keep it so, just so it feels like we can do five episodes of something else at the same time, something that's a little bit easier for us to do, we will be starting on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, specifically the Japanese version, because uh, <laughs> that's the only version I've never seen. I've never seen Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! at all. Um, for any of them, right? Not just any, for GX, none for of any them. of them. Yeah, literally, none of them. literally that's what I I've seen people say, like, see the Japanese version when I was starting up uh, Arc 5 or Arc V, excuse me, Arc V. Um, I saw absolutely everyone, including comments, saying, please watch the Japanese version. And I still pick the English version and I still love the English version. So the only way for you to get me to see the Japanese version of a Yu Gi Oh! show is through this means here. So I will be seeing GX for the first time in Japanese. And Zen. We'll uh, try to watch the five episodes of GX, but if he doesn't see them, it's 100% okay, because literally Zen has watched Yu-Gi-Oh's GX maybe hundreds of times and could tell I've you... I've watched Yu-Gi-Oh GX uh, at least once a year since it started airing in the US. <laughs> Yeah, you used to do, like, Discord parties where you would say, like, yo, everyone, get in, we're watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Yeah, I did that with JoJo, we did Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, I fucking love Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, I can't, I can't stress enough how much I love Yu-Gi-Oh! GX more than all other kinds of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, so if there was any series that we could easily do where I could just need to watch the five episodes and it doesn't matter if Zen sees it, it would be Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So... We'll do that on a different day. It's not going to be next week. Uh, we'll probably be next week. Will be the other five episodes of Gintama and then Yu-Gi-Oh GX, and we'll figure out. I'll figure out what day to release it on that. Currently, I'm going to say Tuesday because that makes sense. Um, that's but yeah, a good that's GX what, day. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> GX will be <laughs> Tuesday, and Gintama will continue to be. Uh, uh, Saturday. So you'll technically get more, which is really funny to think about it now that I say it, is that, hey, we couldn't make the 10 episodes, so instead we're gonna do less episodes of Gintama, but you will get more Shonen Archive. 
So you will get other shonen series, yeah. Yes, hopefully this ends up working for the best and everything's all hunky dory, and we will continue to. And don't worry if you're someone saying like, ah, oh, you won't focus on getting. That's not true. We have 100. percent Gintama will always have the priority <laughs> over Yu-Gi-Oh GX. There might be a time where, uh, due to work, Zen is too busy to see the five episodes of Gintama, but I will always make sure to see the five episodes. So it is always five be episodes the... is usually doable. The thing is like. Ten At, is between after work and then my evening obligations, I have about two hours of free time every day. Yeah. So like ten episodes of Gintama is basically like I'm watching Gintama every second that I'm not obligated to do something else. Yes, which is a lot. Uh, and just to make it, you know, more fair for time's sake, <laughs> I think this is a much more fair going on. For me, it doesn't matter. I could literally see anything just because of uh, my work's dumb everything and i work my work is very different and very dumb and different from zenrod so i have a little bit more free time and wiggle room in that respect and i guess my even aging plans are a little bit different because i don't need to actually go out and do stuff for the most part i can usually do everything from right here but anyway that's enough for the forefront for shonen archive let's get into the actual episodes Zen will be giving us the breakdowns of it, but we're going to start with episode 21, which is a two, is it, is it called a two-parter? It's a two-segmenter with uh, part A being called, if you're a man, try the swordfish, and part B being called, if you go to sleep with a fan on, you'll get a stomach, you'll get a stomach ache, so be careful. So go ahead, Zen. So the first half of this is about them fishing, and they fish it up like what looks like a kappa. But um, it's actually an alien. Yeah, it's a mod because episode. like everything in this show is actually an alien. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's actually um, an alien. And he like is protecting this lake because he uh, wants to for like his sickly old friend that he made. Um, because she's like too ill to swim. And he said that she probably is dead by now, but it's like it makes him happy to protect the lake for her. But there's some douchey guys that are like, we want to uh, have this lake for golf or some shit. It's, I think it's golf. Yeah, and it's uh, golf. so the main cast dresses up like Kappas and beats the shit out of them. And that's the plot of the episode. Very simple in terms of <laughs> what is being done here. The... But yeah, you summed it up basically perfectly there. We'll actually get into it after we go over part B here. Yeah, and then part B is uh, maybe one of my favorite episodes of the whole thing. Um, so it's yes. hot as shit outside, and they have like a shitty little electric fan, and that's all they have. And uh, A senpuki. Yeah, it's called a senpuki in Japanese. And... Uh, Sorry, I'm texting about this cat hunt excursion. Yeah, by the um, way, he was all, Zen has also been trying to save kittens. So if you're... If, we're trying if, to if rescue you, kittens. It's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. We didn't get into it, but yeah, Zen's also saving kittens <laughs> in the background. You so guys... if I pause at random, it's because I'm checking up on how the kitten hunt is going. <laughs> um, so there, it's super hot as shit outside, and uh, everyone's like, you should have gotten an air conditioner. Uh, again and he's like no I don't we just have this fucking fan we're too poor for an air conditioner and then uh, he and Kagura start fighting over the fan and break it so they send him out to go get a new fan and he ends up in like a fucking war with some sort of like evil people who are after the Senpuki because uh, it's actually a machine that counterfeits money but he is just referring to it as a fan and so the whole time he's just trying to get a fan, but there's like um, these evil people chasing him. And then there's a woman who uh, gets captured by them and they're like, we'll kill her if you don't give us the Senpuki. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And then he defeats them for her. And she's like, all I have is an air conditioner. And he's like, I don't even want an air conditioner. <laughs> and then it turns out he was lying the whole time. It, th and he that's, just didn't want to get it when he gives he shows up to the to the he shows up back to the place with the senpuki and it doesn't work so they assume that everything he said was bullshit and then like i think there's like a little thing at the end that shows that 
her name was on it. It's, it's like from thanks from the Earth Defense Force, I think is what it says there on the little fan at the end. And mm-hmm. to let you know that it actually happened, but nobody actually believes anything that what he's saying at all. Um, and then I think there's an end bit of him squeezing squeezing nuts saying, a, a Baraki, stop going to the cabaret club so often. I forget. So there's a lot of squeeze notes. Just to go back to part A real quickly, because this is the one thing I remember most, and this is my only note for it. Uh, when they dr- so when they dress up as Kappa, Gintoki's way of beating the bad guys is an extremely cl- graphic up close shot of him twisting these balls and this dick. <laughs> I was like, okay, that seems extreme. It, like it's hard to explain, and I'm not going to be using this as the cover, so don't worry about it because I don't think I can get away with that. But it's an extreme <laughs> close up of him just squeezing these nuts. That's the main thing I wanted to bring up there because I they bring it back here for the end bit because I just remember like damn why <laughs> they spent it feels like they spent a decent amount of the animation on this one nut squeeze, <laughs> which I don't know I thought was pretty funny it made it all worth it for it I also kind of liked in part A that it was the finally we get the opposite of uh we have an Amano who's actually being bothered by the um by Japanese people as opposed to every other story revolving them which is that the Amano are ruining Japan and this is a case of no Japan is also ruining Japan so it's kind of a case of just like everyone the the business interests are truly what's ruining everything and those exist on both sides of it so I thought it was perfectly fine for a quick like gag okay uh but part b is definitely the better half of it part b has my favorite joke of the night mm-hmm uh, and there's a lot of good jokes in this. these five, by the way. Yes. But Part B has my favorite joke of the night. And it's the one that made me tweet, finding Gintama funny is making me realize I don't have a very good sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> because it's when he's running from the villains that are chasing him for the Senpuki. And he pulls up next to a car. And he gets the guy to roll his window down. And he says, hey, old man, why is this happening to me? And the old man's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And he goes, yeah, I don't either, idiot. And then he drives off. And he cries. Yeah, and he starts to cry. It, it's so good because it's a ruddy gag that he keeps berating <laughs> these fucking truck drivers. <laughs> he keeps yelling at them and he keeps saying like just the most random things to them, too. He's just like, now, he always ends up with a good job, idiot, or your bald dumbass or something like that. And then they just like drive. They're so sad about it. It's so uncalled for how hostile he is. But he's so angry because of the heat. I was I actually put down here. He's relatably angry because the heat also makes me unbelievably mad. <laughs> like, I can't take it at all. He's just, like, picking fights with anyone who will talk to him. Um, when... <laughs> uh, I think he... Also, when he's going around asking for the Senpuki, I think he gets shot at for asking for it as well. I think there's, like, a whole bunch of different, like... I think he, like, he hits a guy because he's, like... He mentioned Senpuki, and before he can even answer, he already knows the answer, so he, like, hits him. <laughs> he's like, I already know. It's like, well, why are you, why are you telling me this? Um, I also really like there's a really good drop as he this part B is him getting as the as he gets progressively more and more pissed it gets more and more funny for me because <laughs> there's a part where he's just yeah, like because it gets progressively more over the top it does and the drop kick he does I had to like because he flips the scooter and then he drop kicks a hole oh, in the when car. he kicks through the car he, he, kicks, yeah, he the kicks like a burning hole through a car and he's just like screaming like ah! he, like, like the scream he does is fucking amazing as he drop kicks this car and then, and then he's like kneeling down in the street in like the superhero pose while the car yes. explodes behind him if it wasn't for a part in a later episode that would have been 100% been the the graphic I would have shown for this episode um, and then also I, I made a note just because when they finally reveal to you why they keep calling the machine the Simpuki, it is maybe the most, it like goes on for so long that I had to put it down. So officially it's called, this is a machine that gives a reward to all of you who are worked hard to make the syndicate rich by minting counterfeit coins just by, just as it is, just as it planned or Simpuki for short. It has n- in no way does. I think you would actually have to know the Japanese language 
in order for yeah, this joke I, to I, make sense. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a language joke that doesn't cross over well, but no. it's still funny. And it's yeah. like a giant cat slot machine. He does, and then the second they reveal it, he just fucking destroys it. He's so yeah, he angry. obliterates it immediately. Uh, <laughs> just I also of... like when he gets so pissed off that he starts like shooting eye beams like Cyclops, he like does. into the sky. <laughs> into the sky. Yes, his episode is man. <laughs> every single episode that Gendama has done about the heat has been so good. And I think it's just because of the reliability of how angry he gets as things go on. And yeah, and this is also an episode where it's mostly him focused too, which it feels like counteracts some of the other episodes that are, I think some of the best episodes actually are the ones that are just Gintoki trying to, where he's actually legitimately playing the straight man, but he's the world's craziest straight man. Yeah, he's like, He's a straight man that gets irritated at what's going on, but he's also over the top in his own way. So he's like, this is fucking stupid. And then he like breathes fire. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Yeah. And a lot of the noises <laughs> he makes, again, the voice actor for uh, Gintoki is one of the best out there. And the screams that he does for this episode, if I was not afraid of uh, <laughs> Shuhei fucking taking down my channel, I would gladly include him because they are amazing. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. I want to point out mm -hmm. that I did. This is kind of off topic, but uh, in Jump Heroes, I did not realize that. The celebration that just ended, the mm -hmm. the fifth hundred and fifty whatever whatever it was, yes yes, was basically just a celebration for this voice actor. Yes, it was because um, <laughs> both Gintoki... because Joseph Joestar and Gintoki are voiced by the same guy, and those yep. were the two limited characters. It was. If it had voice, it would be amazing. That was the only thing we we're missing is his voice for both of them. <laughs> if there was actual it's voice, super funny that it, that he basically got a celebration for two big characters like this at the same time. Yeah. It's understandable. If there's one person that could totally get it done, it'd be him. Uh, uh, anything else to say about this specific... I like this episode. I thought this episode was pretty good. The Kappa one was pretty all right. There was some good gags. It didn't It didn't feel... It didn't, the Kappa it was, one was okay. Yeah, it it was had like, like some good emotional gunk in it in the beginning, and I was like, oh, this is pretty, uh, pretty nice. But I think because it was a, a half episode, they couldn't like lean into it. So it was just like... Okay. Yeah. It kind of funny enough. The it feels like they give all the like warm sensibility out, outside of the giant nut, <laughs> the the nut crunch that is <laughs> that specific part. It kind of feels like all the like, you know, like the uh, the warmth part of Gintama was put into this part, and then all the just crazy antics were saved for the second part, and that's why they were kind of put together, is that one kind of counterbalances the other. One just going like, ah, this is just a very nice story about friendship between this Amato that has transcended time and race of between them, and then the other one is just like, no, he's just fucking done. <laughs> he's he's having his downfall moment <laughs> where he's just off this gorge, can't take it anymore. So I think it fits perfectly fine, and, um... Good job. Good episode. Anything else you want to say about it? Nope. Good episode. Yeah, good. Quality. Yes. And let's see. Next to go... Also, the Gintoki, what his kick was very similar to a writer kick from uh, Common Rider. That's another thing I remember. <laughs> very good kick. Episode 22... <laughs> I the, this this time the name of the title is uh so-called marriage means to maintain the wrong perception for life uh the alternate title that i would like to give this is uh do you feel bad for laughing at misogyny <laughs> <laughs> well what was the what was the title the title on crunchyroll is different uh because i just saw it it's something like um marriage is marriage is to perpetuate an illusion forever or something that might be correct on that one, because I think it's not as <laughs> cruel as to what this one is called. Let me see if I can just quickly pull it up without accidentally starting the episode. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, let's see. Don't let any of that audio play. I know. If I let any of that audio play, I have to fucking edit so much of this. <laughs> the Shueisha snipers. They'll, I've already taken it down. Um, it is called... Mar yes, Marriage is Prolonging... Uh... 
A prolonging illusion your whole life. <laughs> it's prolonging an illusion your whole life. <laughs> also a pretty good title for it. Uh, Zen, why don't you go ahead and tell us what this is? We finally get introduced to this character that was introduced to us at first uh, 21 episodes ago. Yeah, so this character was in the first episode. Um, mm-hmm. And then this is a, now her actual introduction episode. Yeah, pretty funny. That um, it's, it's done that way. And she's like a the ninja assassin. Mm-hmm. Um, Sachan. And she's trying to assassinate some Amanto. And uh, she gets like this super badass intro where she kicks through like a Japanese paper door thing. And she's like got a dude by the neck and she cracks his neck from underneath like, the door and everything. Like Mortal Kombat snaps at neck. Yeah, it even shows like the x-ray of his like spine cracking. Yeah, it's intense. Um, Izumiya. And uh, then it turns out that she's Velma blind without her glasses and like she can't see anything. Yes. 100%. And she lost her glasses. And that's one of the running gags of the episode is that she loses her glasses constantly. Um, and so she has to run away. And while she's escaping, she ends up crashing through Gintoki's roof and like passing out uh, on top of him. And the next morning, they uh, uh, Shinpachi, Shinpachi and Kagura find him, and uh, they're like, "What the fuck?" And Gintoki was super drunk last night, so he thinks that he like picked her up at a bar or something. Yeah, and they had sex, and he feels very bad about it because he thinks it's like an improper way to behave. But then <laughs> she's like super obsessive with him because she's trying to use him as cover, so she yeah. can hide out here, so the people chasing her will will lose her trail. Uh, so she's trying to be like, she's playing it up like they did have sex so that she can like, oh, we have to get married now, etc. Uh, and she's being like a super clingy fake housewife. And she keeps having these internal monologue moments about how like all part of the plan. Very kind uh, of Kira-esque. <laughs> very like, yeah, very. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, he keeps getting like progressively more irritated with her over time. It's progressively more misogynistic as the episode yeah. goes on. Well, because he's tr- he's trying to chase her away. He is. is. The whole point. It, it is on purpose. Is that he's, he's, he's intentionally being a huge douche to try to get her to leave him alone. Yeah. Um, it's still super misogynistic. Um, it's still also super funny. It's, it's, it's really funny. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I'm sorry. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> We're so sorry. Any ladies listening to this, it fucking had me dying. There's a part of me that's like, oh my god, I should feel so bad about there's this. There's literally a part where she takes his pudding out and combines it with natto because she likes natto. Yeah. And she's like, I made a combination of our two favorite things. And he smacks the <laughs> shit out of her. <laughs> she puts it in her mouth and makes her eat it. You've ruined the good pudding. <laughs> yeah. He fully, literally smacks the fuck out of her and sends the, all the food all across the floor and shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't think it's the exact same tweet, but this is where he says, "You need to if you're going to be with me, you have to learn the hierarchy. It goes Kentucky number one, then sweets, and then, it's, then he yeah. gives like... Sweets and, number two. And then I think the other's like, why the hell is sweets number two? Yeah, like, Shinpachi others... gets mad that sweets are higher than him in the hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, continue on. <laughs> we just they, uh... Yeah, so he, he keeps being shitty to her, and she's, like, getting upset about it, because she's like, I have to just let this guy be a dick to me so I can hide out here. But the more he does it, the more she starts realizing she has, like, a humiliation kink. She um, slowly starts to realize she's really into this. <laughs> Yeah, that she's actually super into it. And so the more he tries to be a douche to get her to leave, the tighter she clings to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't remember what happens that gets him to finally agree to marry her. She th- it's the- They think she's pregnant. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so he finally is like, okay, we're going to get married. And he's in like one of those fancy marriage kimono things. And he has probably one of my favorite quotes. If you'll settle for a man like me, let's get married. <laughs> Yep. And then uh, she drags him off to help rescue her teammates because they got captured during her botched assassination. Mm -hmm. And she keeps making up these elaborate stories uh, as to like who they are. (laughs) What like what was it was um they were climbing this wall 
And she's like, oh, oh that's our butler, Nakamura. He's looking yeah. for me because I stayed out past curfew. And then uh, she knocks him out when they get spotted. And Kitoki freaks out. And he's like, he's just doing his job. And he goes, Nakamura, no! <laughs> Nakamura, no! And, and then just... they get to the top of the wall. And there's more guards. And Kentucky's like, Jesus, who are these guys? And she's like, that's Nakamura B, Nakamura C. <laughs> Nakamura C. Yeah. And they're all named Nakamura to her. Um, and so they keep fighting their way through. And then uh, they get chased by this big army of dudes. And Kentucky's like going to do his dramatic last stand thing. Which she calls um, her exes as well. Yeah. She says the army is her ex-boyfriends working with uh, her dad. to Because she says the person she's got to kill is her dad mm-hmm. uh, so that Gintoki will help her and uh, Gintoki like stops to do this dramatic hero's last day and then he bails out at the last minute and runs yeah. away as they get um, closer and closer yeah and like his, his badass speech gets like progressively more uh, afraid mm-hmm. and then uh, she loses her glasses again before her last like attempt so she's surrounded by people who are going to kill her, but she gets saved at the last minute by Gintoki. Mm-hmm. And they have like this sweet little moment where she's trying to patch up his injuries, but he's not even hurt. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and then uh, he gets up and is mean to her again, and it gets her back in love with him again. Yep. And then... Oh, wait, did I lose you then? Nope, I'm still here. Okay, okay, good. Okay, go. Sorry again if I don't hear anything in a little bit. I always assume I've lost internet. <laughs> I'm like a dog. My my, my perception of is I can't. I don't hear Zen. Zen gone. <laughs> it, it lose internet. What? Did I, it's a defense mechanism. Uh, continue on. So the they reach the 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 dad or the the rat man. <laughs> yeah, they get uh, attacked. And uh, she's about to get killed because she doesn't have um, her glasses. Her glasses. And Gintoki saves her. And then they have a sweet little moment at the end. Yeah. And then uh, he's mean to her again and she like gets back into it again. And then the episode ends with Shinpachi opening up Gintoki's bedroom again. And she's moved like a shitload of like bondage equipment in there. Yeah. And she's like, okay, please be mean to me. And he's like, I, this is not because he says something like um i'm like a shitty guy so if we're together i'm gonna like bind you to all of my rules and I, she gets super turned on by that notion i said I and think so he, she he also says uh he is going to defeat all her bad habits by declaring his dominance in the marriage yeah yeah and uh she like has all this fucking like whips and like chains and ropes and shit and she hands it to him, and she's like, please bind me now. And he's like, this is not what I meant. <laughs> and the episode ends. Yeah. Yeah, that is this episode. Uh, I really like this episode. <laughs> so uh, Brian... It's probably either this one or the next one are my favorite. Uh, I really like this one. Yeah, I really one... like when she's uh, trying to attack Atose. Yes, that was another thing, because Atose just dodges absolutely everything she does. <laughs> Yeah, she throws like a ninja, like a kunai, mm-hmm. at um, Atose, and she catches it between her fingers and just puts it in her sleeve and takes it. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Like her, the, the, for an introduction for a character, this might be one of the strongest, just because she has a lot of good interactions with basically everyone. The, the, not every single person is here, but a good amount of them. It's really funny the specific relationship that she has with the slow realization that she's really into being put down is great because she doesn't start that way. She starts as a normal. Yeah, at first she's offended by it. She's like, yes. "I'm a fucking ninja of the Oniwabanshu. Why do I have to sit here and let this guy talk to me like this?" And then the more he does it, she starts to be like getting turned on by it. Yes, more and more. Um, I I like it when he's specifically waking up. There's another reason is because this is actually a borrowed not 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 all all of it not like one to one, but this is actually a chapter in one of my uh uh harems that I've liked of the idea of a bunch of characters waking uh, going into the room and noticing that they are somehow sleeping together down to the fact that they think that one of them is pregnant by the end. 
for some reason, like, this specific, like, scenario is the one that I like for some strange reason that it reminds me from Harm 1 as well. So I like that at that jump as well. Um, <clears throat> a lot of just, like, oh, again, the misogyny. Again, it's a shame that we live in such a terrible world for women because sometimes misogyny is funny. But at the same time, it can also, it's maybe the worst thing to laugh at. <laughs> Because it's also done, it can be done very poorly, but I think this is one of the few cases where uh, it's funny, so I think it ends up getting a pass for me personally. And again, the actual character of her is very strong, and she's actually into it. I don't know if that makes it better, but it at least makes me feel better about it, <laughs> so it works for me on that level, I think. Uh, I really like it when the rat, she keeps mentioning all of them in their family. I think one of her exes is also dressed, dressed up as Jason, which is what I remember, so I think that's yes. pretty good. Uh, there's a part where Kagura is like trapped in Naoto. She looks like she's being like consumed by a yeah, monster. Yeah, she's being eaten by Naoto monster. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, that. I think he asks, like, "How did you even get this way?" Because <laughs> she's she's like off for like a for like one screen, and then when he comes back, it's completely consumed her. <laughs> uh, Kagura also eats off the ground. And says it's good. That's a, another thing I remember. She starts eating the food that when he because when she puts the pudding with the Naoto together. He, like, throws it away, and then Kagura starts actually eating it off the ground and saying, hey, actually, this is a pretty okay. Yeah. F- figure overreacting a little bit. I think it's good. <laughs> but also, like, the, the second that they think that he might be in a relationship, he's like, well, we're going to put you to work. So she immediately starts cleaning up after the place. Like, it's an immediate, like, put down of trying to get rid of her in such an amazing way. <clears throat> um... I think this is also something Kagura says. She says men should play around when they're young, because if they don't, when they get into they get when they become older, they get tricked by young women, and or they get into really weird fetishes. That's what yeah, her mom tells and, her. and then she goes, "That's what my mom always told me." And then Gintoki's like, "Your mom really went through some stuff, huh?" <laughs> yeah, he's, he's immediately like, "Damn, okay." <laughs> uh. <laughs> Also, when they accuse him of being into uh, ninja roleplay, because the the first thing they think about of her dressed up as a ninja isn't that she's my, she's maybe a ninja. It's more that he's into uh, women who are ninjas. And then his his response to that is, you know I like nurses. <laughs> you know I prefer nurses over anything else. Like, that's not a me behavior. It's, it's almost like him saying, like, actually, maybe he was super hella drunk because he's usually not into this kind of stuff. So don't <laughs> don't get get my fetishes confused for something else. <clears throat> but yeah, the this episode was funny. I like it. It's it was really, really good. Yeah, I'm interested to see more of it. I think I remember liking her parts from what we saw in episode one as well. So looking forward to seeing more of her. I also uh, like the Velma gag because I like Velma. So I also like Scooby Doo. So if you're not a fan of Scooby Doo, then I don't know what to say about what to say about you. Shoutouts to my friend Jace, who is not a fan of Scooby Doo, and I've had arguments about him over this. What do you feel about? The- <laughs> what do you feel, Zen? Uh, really good episode. Probably the best one of the five. It's very close between this one and the next one. Uh, the next one has that emotional core that I like, but this one had really good comedy and was just the most fun of all of them for sure. Yeah, really fun for sure, for sure. But yeah, that's the episode. Let's see. Nezumiya. I forget that Nezumi is also a rat. So that's how I also remember it. That's like, oh yeah, that is his name. Because almost anything rat related will have the name Nezu in it somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> next episode, episode 23, as it's called here, When You Are Troubled, Laugh It Off, Laugh It Off. And I think on Crunchyroll, it is called, uh, When You're In a Fix. All right, let me quickly... When you're in a fix, keep on laughing, laughing. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, tell us what it's about, Zen. Sorry, cat text. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> cat text. <clears throat> sorry. Remember? Cat text. Um, so, yeah, this one... Oh, wait, this isn't even the one that I... I I'm a, for, had actually forgotten about this one. It's the next one I thought was maybe the best one. But, actually, this one's really good, too. So, I don't know anymore. There's too many good ones. Yeah. Again, um, very... You see why I wanted to talk about these five? <laughs> yeah. So, Kagura uh, wins, like, a lottery for some tickets to go into outer space, right as they're lamenting that they'll never get to go to outer space. Um, 
So they go uh, get on the plane, and like they want to bring Sadaharu, and the the flight person won't let them. <sighs> Sorry, cat text. It's all right. While you're doing that, I'll also say that there was a beginning of the intro that is done by Sachan, and she says she tries to make up the saying it was a love story, then Gintogi tells her to please stop. <laughs> what are you doing? I like gags uh, in, the, in the beginning where they mess things yeah, up. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. There's a really good end gag later at, after the last episode, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Yes, yes. Um, so they they get on this cruise ship and it gets hijacked and they defeat the hijackers, but the hijackers set off a bomb and Gintoki finds an old war buddy named Sakamoto who he thinks can fly it because he loves ships. Um, but he's kind of like a drunk, loony dumbass and he ends up breaking the wheel off of the ship. Mm-hmm. And so they crash land on they're they're supposedly right next to Earth, but they crash land on like a desert planet. <laughs> yeah, like <that's> <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's not Mars, so I don't know where the fuck they're supposed to be, but it literally looks like Tatooine. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it turns out that the guy whose name is Sakamoto is from, like, he, he made, like, this rich company. Uh, that It's like a shipping company that he uses because he wants to try to, like, help the country that way. Instead of trying to kill the Amato in the war, because he was like a soldier with when Gintoki was, mm-hmm. um, and they come to rescue everyone, and they land their ships, which ends up disturbing like this giant sandworm monster. I think it's literally called like a sand bug or something. Um, yeah. Literally, just what's a shit? What's it called? It's a sand bug. It's literally a sand bug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they all like a bunch of them get caught by the sand bug. And Sakamoto saves everyone except himself by shooting its tentacles with a gun. He li- It's actually, damn it! Every single time I think of a joke, I think that it's my favorite one because that's just when I remembered <laughs> it most recently. But uh, his assistant hates him because he's like a drunk idiot and he's always getting into trouble. And yes. so they're like, she's like, "Fuck him up, Sandbug." <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> she's immediately yeah, on the other one he, side. He goes, "I'm not gonna die here." And he pulls just a straight up gun out of the fuck out of his pants, and he starts shooting the tentacles of the sandbug. <laughs> uh, and it ends up breaking all the tentacles off to save all of his friends. But the bug still has him, and it starts uh, trying to sink the the ships. Mm-hmm. And so they start shooting it because he says he's going to sacrifice himself, and they can kill the sandbug and get away. Um, which the the assistant ends up giving like a heartfelt speech that they actually do care about him. And they're following his mantra to always do your duty, no matter what, even if it's, if it's difficult at the time to do. Um, and then Gintoki wakes up cause he's literally just been sleeping the whole time. <laughs> like <Yeah>. Goku style. <laughs> um, Very Goku esque. Yeah. He wakes up and he gets them to stop shooting the cannons because he realizes that, the cannons are just scaring it, which is making it try to submerge, which is going to get him killed. Uh, so he jumps down and attacks the sandbug and ends up saving Sakamoto. And they have this flashback, and um, it, they kind of reveal that the reason Sakamoto was able to go do his duty and leave Earth behind was because Gintoki said that he would be there to protect him or protect it mm-hmm. in his place. Um, Yeah, and he, then then they both he ends up being um, they end up being going into the sand, right? And then they save him. I yeah, mean, so they they well, Gintoki saves him because he's getting pulled into the sand. Yes, yes, Gintoki grabs him, and then it ends with them kind of like laying on the sand. Um. Yeah, I think that's just literally how it ends with them. Yeah, it, like... it ends. Gintoki saves them and pull. I think it literally ends there. Like it doesn't show them leaving the planet. I think it shows like the crew members running out and cheering that Gintoki saved him, and then it ends right there. Yeah, and then they do an end joke, which is uh, Gin Gintoki looks up at the upcoming anime and he sees uh, Gintama is coming up right after Bleach, but they've misspelled Gintama and they call it Kintama, which is the running guy. Right. Oh, means... because he keeps calling him Kintoki. Kintoki, And yeah. Gintoki gets pissed off because he's like, if my name was Kintoki, we wouldn't be able to air the show. 
Yeah. <laughs> because Kintama means testicles. Yeah, and then at the end, they show the, sh- the show airing <laughs> called Kintama. And he's very much like, oh. And that's another reference of just showing Bleach, which I thought you would remember because they keep showing I, Bleach. I, I did remember it, but I didn't think to mention it because he's literally just looking at a newspaper clipping. Oh. And he's like, oh, we made it. And it just says Bleach <laughs> in English letters. It says in big letters Bleach and then in a little tiny yeah. thing, Kintama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh. Uh. Yeah, this episode, I I, forget, I think, just like you mentioned before, I really like this episode. This is another character that hasn't been shown, but he's been referenced. This is the guy who gave, uh, um, who is the reason that was, uh, Elizabeth is there. Because remember, he's the one who gave um, to Katsuru. He's the one who, I think Katsuru said, like, oh yeah, I got this package from from him and and that's where they got elizabeth from so he's been mentioned here and there so you actually get to see him and i think his introduction's pretty good i like the gag with uh him basically carrying around sadaharu the entire time where he's like i feel very weak and it's just sadaharu has been on his back va- it's been on his head fighting him the entire time yeah he's like oh man i must really have at one point because every time he's like feeling the effects of being attacked by sadaharu he's like oh man I must have a hangover, or oh, I'm sweating really bad. Why is my sweat red? Oh, it's because I drank tomato juice. <laughs> and one of the, pa- it's either like a flight attendant or like a passenger or something gets mad, and they're like, at some point there has to be a limit to a positive outlook. <laughs> I also like it when he shows up with Sadaharu on his uh, head, and uh, Kagura's immediate reaction isn't that, oh my god, are you okay? It's to attack him and go like, you're trying to kidnap Sadaharu. <laughs> Yeah, she kicks him right in the face. Yeah, because when he's when he's uh, walking away with him, she's also like, "Hey, don't take my dog!" <laughs> like she can't. Yeah, stop he's literally him. just walking away with Sadaharu, like biting into his skull. Exactly. So I really like. Also, there's sp- a good gag in it as well when they're trying to save. Well, first of all, it's this is an airplane reference. Yes, <laughs> because as the plane's going down, literally a flight attendant rushes out and says, "Does anyone know how to fly a spaceship?" <laughs> um and then as they're doing it uh the three of them are wrestling over the wheel it, it, gintoki kagura and Shibari. shinpachi are all yeah. trying to get the wheel from one another and sakamoto goes i know exactly what's about to happen you guys are going to keep fighting over the wheel and then you're going to hilariously break the wheel off so i better stop <laughs> it before you do and he trips and grabs the wheel and rips it right off the fucking thing <laughs> and then they attack him <laughs> <laughs> And they go like, "How? What? What are you doing?" Like, <laughs> it's another case of like, it's another fun of the funny gags of like they, the three of them immediately shitting on a person when it's technically their fault something bad is happening. Even though in this one case it is him, the only reason he was doing that was because they were fucking around on the on the wheel the entire time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good gags when the. Uh, when they're in the space planet and they're like freaking, the like in the desert, Kagura starts quoting Rocky Balboa for some reason, and she starts going because she, she says, "I'm gonna go to the Oasis." So I think she does this all the time, not all the time, but she does it occasionally. Well, she just start making Rocky references, like when she said Adrian a little while back, and they're like, "Who the fuck is Adrian? Like, what are you talking about at any given point?" Um, but yeah, when Gintoki's going to rescue her, I like the gag of like, "Oh, she's so weak." I'll just take her to this oasis that I see. Just like, like, like he puts her on her back, and he's immediately also about to send him to their death, which is really good. The emotional bits showing a little bit more of the past is always I always appreciate it whenever we see it because I think it's an interesting look at Gintoki, especially because of the things that we know about him so far. We know that at the end of the war, specifically. It looked like things were, he was like in an okay place. But then by the time we get to Atose, something has happened where he's like fucked up in some reference. So now I'm actually kind of interested to see like the specific, like as more puzzle pieces fall into place where I'm like, well, now I kind of need to know exactly at what point did he meet them and do that. So very interested in seeing anything uh, related to that because it's a slow build up and I, I enjoy it. And yeah, it was just the some nice emotional bits, some good funny bits and good overall i'd say uh how'd you feel about it it was good i really liked it um all the characters were good i really like sakamoto and yeah i like how 
we kind of pick up bits and pieces of Gintoki like here and there, but we never really um, like get his full story. You know, like we're still yeah. kind of learning. Yeah, it's it's a slow building and learning to kind of just understanding the character, it's trying to see like. I guess where how is he specifically like this and where he's like this and stuff like that. I think it's an interesting way to build up a character for sure. Because most in most uh, uh, manga, the main character kind of grows as time goes on. Funny enough, I think the only one that's not like that is probably Undead Unluck, where there's an entire whole other thing going on in there that I won't spoil because it's also very hard to spoil without getting into some complicated things. But for the most part, the main character kind of grows on you as time goes on and you only really know him at like the base value of when they first show up. But this is a character that's yeah. basically already the way he is and he's not really growing. He's kind of growing the people around him. Like he's helping out Kagura. He's helping out Shinpachi and doing other stuff, but he is who he is already. So it's kind of interesting to me to see that part of it uh, play out for sure. Uh, and yeah, anything else you want to say? Oh, and the, anything else you want to say about the, the episode? Before we move on, uh, no, I think I'm good to move on. Yeah, very good job. Fan, some fantastic uh, as the as the episodes go on, some fantastic uh, character building for sure. As new characters kind of get introduced, they're doing a much better job of introducing them and making them uh, uh, well de- uh, well developed. And speaking of a new character, we have episode twenty four. Which is called Cute Faces Must Be Hiding Something. And I think on the Crunchyroll, it is called Cute Faces Are Always Hiding Something, I think. Uh, yes. This is an episode, by the way, that was told to me beforehand that uh, <laughs> over the years, they've had to ch- uh, change some of the t- subtitles on Crunchyroll because they were maybe using some language that is not <laughs> officially... Uh, was maybe a little bit too harsh. And it was so harsh for them to kind of go back and go like, yeah, let's kind of dial that back a little bit because that's maybe not 100% what the characters were going. So we got a much better translation of it, I guess. A much more... (laughs) It's not as savage as, I guess, the original viewing of it if you saw it back in the day is what I'll say. Uh, Go ahead and tell us what it's about, Zen. Uh. Hey, sorry, cat texts. No, it's all right. As we all know, the cats come first. That's what Kentucky would do. Always remember that. What would what would Kentucky do? <laughs> the, that's what the bracelet says. Uh, okay. So the next one is. They uh, we meet the second like. The what are they called? The Empress, uh, uh, the Royal, the Royals of Kabuchiko District, and Atose is fighting with uh, Saigo is, is their name. Saigo, yes. And uh, yeah, Gintoki comes out and he's like, "Can't you guys shut up?" And he, he ends up calling Saigo a freak. Yes, and uh, sets him off bad. Terribly. And he, uh, yeah, Saigo knocks him out and takes him back to like their drag parlor. And has uh, Gintoki like work there as Paco, and you find out that Katsura also works there uh, because, again, another joke that I'm now saying is like my favorite because it's I've just remembered it. They're at this soba bar, and they're like, uh, Katsura's there with Elizabeth, and he's talking to Elizabeth like the law is really strict right now, so we can't do anything to draw any attention to ourselves, and then. Saigo gets his soba before uh, Katsura does, and Katsura immediately flips the fuck out and like draws his sword, and he's like, "What the fuck? That person ordered after me." Calls and yeah. it's a whole. It's fucking funny. Yeah, um, it is also the the his name while in the uh, in the in the bar. It's uh, Zaraka. And I think they call he calls he calls her Zura. And he's like, it's not Zura, it's Zuraka. Yeah, it's Zuraka. And then they find they they meet the uh, Saigo's son, mm-hmm. who's getting bullied because his dad is a crossdresser, it's a drag queen. Um, and then you kind of find out that the dad became that way because he leaned too hard into being a replacement mother 
for the child after the mother died in childbirth or when he was really young. I don't remember which, but he has no memory of his mother, is how young he was. Yes, um, and you kind of find out that at first it looks like the son is like ashamed of his dad, and then it turns out that that's not the case. Um, he just doesn't want to see anyone be mean to his dad because of how much he loves his dad. And bullies end up throwing him in a place with that fucking alien prince who always has the evil Marlon Brando alien. Yeah. Prince, uh, uh, Prince Pocket. No, not, not, not Prince Paco. His name is Prince, uh, Hata. Yes. Prince Hata, AKA Marlon Brando alien. <laughs> Everyone's favorite returning alien is back with a new alien to show off for the episode. Um, Yes. And so uh, they have an alien, and it's like uh, uh, it looks almost like Sadaharu, and they pet it a little bit, but then it turns out that it's like an anglerfish, yeah. and the Sadaharu head is um, meant to trick them. Like, it's a trick, yeah. And it's actually a big monster that attacks them, and right as they're about to get killed by it, uh, the son's dad shows up and beats the shit out of it. And it turns out he was like a legendary hero of the Amanta War. Um, and they end up going to like the parent teacher conference day. And the kid writes this paper about his dad mom and mm-hmm. is like, This was, uh, this is my dad mom and I love them and they have an amazing spirit. And they all kind of, um, like grow to respect him. Yeah. And it's a it's a very it's a very nice ending bit for sure. There's also another ending bit because they mentioned it very briefly. The end bit for this episode is um, Katsura and uh, Gintoki wearing jackets that say samurai. Because <laughs> at the beginning he says, yeah, "I'll give you my the samurai leather jacket. jacket," and he says, "Like whatever, I don't want it." Then at the end he says, "Like you really wanted to wear it," and, he, and then I think he's like, "It's like so you did want to wear the jacket," and he goes, "Like whatever, <laughs> I don't care." Um. Okay, so this episode specifically... Oh, before I get into this episode, uh, let me just quickly go in, because there was actually a comment, because I remembered someone finally explained the accept, the uh, obsession with mayonnaise. So let me just quickly explain that real quick, because I wanted to say it at the beginning, but I completely forgot until now, and Hijikata has not shown up, so I'm going to explain it real quick. So... Uh, Hijikata's obsession with mayonnaise, specifically Japanese mayo, is sort of an homage parody of a particular group of people in Japan known as uh, mayoras. They're so addicted to the condiment that they form this unique little pop culture cri- tribe where it's basically the star dish and everything, even the alcohol. This is from Hal Nix, by the way. So... There's a place in Japan in the outskirts of Tokyo that specializes in the subculture group's mania known as the Mayo Kitchen, where every order has an unhealthy dosage of Japanese mayo mixed in the recipe. I'm not sure if it still exists, but in all likelihood, there are plenty of places where people like Kijikata still clamor to. You're probably wondering why and how the people can be so obsessed with one particular food condiment to the point where they dump the whole bottle onto the dish, especially mayonnaise. Well, there was a couple of things I learned on researching why this became a thing in Japan, and conversely, the character quirk of a seemingly stoic character like Hijikata. First of all, mayonnaise is a western-based food item that was introduced in Japan in the 20th century because of the traditional diet on this country. The condiment actually pairs well with most of their dishes, which is why it's often found in recipes, particularly the common household since it was cheap. Second, uh, Japanese mayonnaise is made differently from the western predecessor and it has a flavor profile that's much more addicting to the palate of people in Japan, which is why it's so frequently seen. Third, because older generations consider this type of food excessive, immature, or unnecessary, it becomes one of those food crazes that really hits off with the rebellious youth who want to embrace the Western culture and stick it to the old generation. So weirdly enough, Japanese mayo is a part of a pop culture reference and is one of the many time capsule running jokes in this series. Super weird, yes, but it's somehow perfectly f- perfect for this series, also yes. And that is from Hell Nix. Thank you very much for explaining that, because I had, you know, there's certain, like culture things that it's just very hard to explain (laughs) and i always appreciate whenever someone uh goes into length and actually explains it because it's always very interesting to look into the culture of another place and kind of be like well this is a joke that works here because of this specific reason um funny enough the obsession with mayonnaise just comes off as weird to anyone who is like 
I guess has mayonnaise and is not a big thing in, in Japan. So very cool to learn about that. Currently, uh, Zen is away because he's on the kit, cat duty. So for right now, you just have me, which is why I was going into that comment. <laughs> so, ah, uh, man, I don't want to specifically talk about the episode before we go in there. So before I go and just pause it, I'm just going to say, man, thanks for watching it at this point. Thank you very much. I think we'll pause and we'll come back whenever the cat situation is done. So until then, enjoy some uh, music as and we will be right back. So don't worry about it, everyone. We'll be right back. Oh, I'm back and I will finish the actual episode because I didn't read Zen's full note about the cat. So he's in the cat situation. So I'm going to finish up this episode. So, let's see. So, yes, episode 24. I think this is a very well done uh, episode. Um, I really appreciate a lot of things. Let me find my notes right here. So, I like the kind of, like, immediate punishment for Gintoki's antics on this. Like we said in the previous episode, his mis the misogyny jokes don't really get punished in a lot of ways. But in here, the second he gets called freak, he immediately gets called out on it and he immediately gets punished for it. I think that's a good way of kind of showing of like this type of behavior is wrong. And really this entire episode is trying to show like what, why that specific mindset just isn't right. And even the uh, characterization of characters like um, uh, Saigo, who would be extremely tough in most, I'm going to say right now, in most anime manga of anything, a kind of character like this would be extremely tough to do without in some ways kind of setting off and like not fully like getting or understanding like it just ends up coming off weird like even some of the greatest writers of their time cannot specifically do a character like this kind of justice but i think they actually do do it right because they show specifically that what they wish to be is a father and a mother to their child because they don't have a mother and they want to be viewed as both a mother and a father at the same time and i think that's kind of what the psycho is figures out by the end is that yes uh, Saigo is a mother, but he is also a father when need be. And he is both, and there's nothing wrong with being both of them. And everything kind of ends happy. Happy-go-lucky there. And I really like that episode for kind of having that kind of message around it. I think it's very nice to have a... Especially in anime where so many times, like even like if you want, it, it goes beyond anime. It goes with Japan and the specific culture of Japan. So I can't really say too much about it because I, I don't live there. But, you know, stuff like... Um, maybe Persona 5 is the most obvious example of how those characters like this kind of get treated and they kind of get treated and they get short shrift in terms of writing and they're not really characters they're characterizations and I don't really feel like Saigo is a characterization of anything not a characterization of a that's not the right word of it it's called a stereotype maybe a either way it's not really a character it's more of a thing of what they are they're a bit they're not an actual character they're not an actual being who lives in the world they're just something that exists and I think in here, it's uh, very much going for more that uh, this person is a character. And I think it's very nice and cool of how they do it. I also really like Kentoki as Paco and that they never really break face. I like that at one point there's a joke that say Paco has a face that screams uh, poverty. <laughs> so, <laughs> And they call uh, Paco a dumb blonde for getting stuck in a hole, which is pretty good. And the immediate... Just like, I guess I live here forever now, I think is really good. Uh, Marlon Brando also has a pretty good line there saying, like, uh, you should always help women. And I think they make a joke about his mom was pretty homely, so that's why he's perfectly fine with helping all women or something. But yeah, in the end, it was a happy ending. Son accepts his father and who's his mother and says, doesn't matter. As long as you're a good person, that's all that really matters deep down. And I would consider that a win in most columns for anything. And then at the end, they reveal that Gintama has been renewed for a third season. Which is funny because I don't know how they break down seasons in here, but I'm going to assume the season breakdown is that whenever there's a new OP or AD, that's the signifier of a new season. So that was episode 24. I think next episode we'll ask Zen his specific feelings on episode 24 and episode 25, but for now we will continue on with just me. Uh, so episode 25, the hot pot is a microcosm of life. This is the 25th episode of Gintama. And here's the basic uh, premise of it. 
Um, they are throwing a party to celebrate the fact that they have been renewed for another season. They start bickering, and a psychological warfare starts. And they start as they start to disagree over who should get the meat first. As the episode kind of progresses on, more characters get introduced, like Katsura and Elizabeth, who have their own idea about how they should get the 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 nabe is what they call it, and to become the nabe shogun. And eventually, it ends up being round one is won by Kagura, and uh, she calls herself the Nabe Shogun after being able to get a hold of the Nabe. Um, and then the reveal is that when Otose and Catherine come in, is that uh, uh, Kagura has not actually eaten the correct thing. She's actually just eaten cheap pork, and she has not actually eaten the Nabe that she thought she had, which is the expensive stuff. She falls into a kind of state of sh- a pure shock, and she falls over. Now with Fatosa and Catherine in the mix, they continue the mind games that they were doing previously. Um, and they also reveal that Fatosa and Catherine themselves are some kind of like meat demons. Um, as they kind of fight to eat the meat specifically as they go back and forth. Uh, um, Katsura and Elizabeth ends up conceding their points and it's up to uh, Shinpachi and Gintoki to kind of win it. Um, but it ends up being the winner is... Kagura all along as she kind of wakes up she swallows the entire hot pot and she declares herself the Na- Napoleons which is uh the Nabe and Napoleons like the em- the full-on emperor so she ends up winning and then she ends up saying that she thinks that the other <laughs> meat was better and everyone kind of rushes her and says like hey they should um she doesn't deserve the meat if that's how she feels and then a cameo of sorts Ryuk is in the top of the roof from Death Note because if you have not caught up on this this entire episode is an entire Death Note parody uh <laughs> yeah this entire episode being a Death Note parody really makes it hard to kind of talk about other than to say I really enjoyed the entirety of the Death Note parody like they get the specific feeling of Death Note so right that I just like found it so like every it's so easy for this specific segment to kind of be like unfunny for a lot of ways and the funny thing is that like when they show the new OP and everything like they're it's a it's a still shot of a house and then even when they come back from the OP they're still on the still shot so it's very much it very much feels like a um it's very much a fourth breaking um it's breaking the fourth wall a whole bunch in this episode and specifically it even ends i think at the end with saying like hey you should watch death note because this episode was basically death note um here's some notes that i put down jackie chan was 50 when this episode came out because they start talking about jackie chan for some reason the new op plays which i need to hear a little bit more uh but it, i remember it sounding pretty good there's also a new ED, which is a shame because I really like Mr. Raindrop. So it's going to take me a little while to get used to the new ED. I think Mr. Raindrop, maybe it's because it's in English and I can actually understand what's being said. It makes me really like it, but um, yeah. Uh, Kentucky said there's no way for Elizabeth can, to use uh, chopsticks. And then it cuts to them making or <laughs> and then they do a cutaway gag of her making origami crane to show that actually she's extremely dexterous. Um, when they're doing the Death Note parody inside his head, Gintoki calls, um, Katsura Zura, and then inside of Katsura's head in the Death Note style, he says, it's not Zura, it's Katsura. (laughs) Um, there's a lot of mind games of Kagura trying to pretend that she's actually dumb, but she's actually very smart. Um, and yeah, that was basically this entire episode. It's very hard to talk about without the specific Death Note stuff. But I thought it was a very effective um, parody of Death Note that actually kind of gets the feel of it. I think this is between, I think, this episode and the previous episode. Episode 24 and 25, as to which one is my favorite. I think this one is mine because I really love Death Note. And I've watched that anime. And that anime is um, it's just specifically, I guess, the first part before it kind of falls off the rails at the end is my favorite part of it um is one of my favorite animes uh before it kind of falls off the part so for them to do a full-on parody i think is very funny and very good um yeah and i enjoyed the entirety of it it's a very simple premise so simple that it's very hard to kind of go into it more than um (laughs) what i've mentioned here um but it was very well done that's basically the end of it. We'll ask Zen next week how he felt about episode 24 and 25. But I'm going to assume he also liked it. I think beforehand we said basically every episode was good. Um, 
some standouts for me specifically, I think, are episode 25 and uh, 24. Oh, God, there's a lot of good episodes. I feel It kind of feels unfair to call all of them. I think, actually, this is one of the few cases where I'll say, I think I all five of these were good in a way that I can't. Like, it's only by a small margin that I think 25 is my favorite. Um, with all of them being fantastic in their own way. Uh, very, very good set of five episodes. Glad to finally talk about at least the Zen for the first, uh, talk about them by at least the first three. We'll talk about them next week and see, give his quick thoughts about what he felt about it. Again, he has to save those kitties, man. There's just no way around it. Save those cats, man. But that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. We will be back next week with five more episodes of, uh, Gintama on, uh... Saturday, and then on Tuesday, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, so look forward to that. Should be a lot of fun. We're going to continue on moving forward. Until next time, everyone, Everyone, you guys have a good day. You have a good night. I'll see you guys next time. And thanks a whole bunch for watching. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Zen says bye from Inside Us Heart. Bye-bye.